Good morning, you guys. I am uh, coming at you here again with Smiley Sam under the hood there. <laughs> I love the smile. It's, <laughs> it's awesome. I just look over, all I can see is big grinning. <laughs> Uh, he's back on the instruments again. We got to log 10 hours of instrument time in the commercial course. Uh, so what a, a lot of the time what we do is when we're going in and out of the zone or transiting somewhere that uh, he's been to before and he knows the area, we'll just put the hood on and do a little bit of uh, navigating. It's actually kind of cool. He's got the iPad on with four flight and um, you can see the freeway, the number one freeway on the iPad. And so that's his uh, direction. So I've given him an altitude and a, and a speed to hold. And then he can just actually look at the iPad and he can see the freeway. And so I told him to stay on the right side, right hand side of the freeway and that's what he's doing. So it's actually kind of neat. He's able to technically navigate um, using a, a landmark on ForeFlight without me having to tell him where to go. So very kind of a neat feature there. Um, so we're just heading out to the river right now. We're going to do some range variation autos, um, just some different ones to see if he can get more comfortable with targeting a specific spot. And then the main exercise for today is constant angle approaches to the dike. And so what that means, uh, you have a raised dike, they're all over the place here. And uh, so we're going to try and approach, pretending that that dike is uh, either the top of a mountain or a cliff or a ledge or something um, on the side of a mountain. And the idea is that you shoot your, uh, your approach at a constant angle all the way to that spot. You don't fall short of the spot and end up in a hover, you know, 10 feet short of your spot. Um, you don't end up in a 15-foot hover above your spot and have to come down at it. Um, you shoot this nice, beautiful, constant angle approach until you're in a, a one or two-foot hover right over top of your spot. The reason this is so important. Golf Mike the the reason this is so important. Uh, he's behind us. Is because if you're shooting an approach to a mountain spot and you fall short and you realize that you're running out of power. The helicopter is just going to start sinking, and if you're too close to your spot, it's going to sink into the side of the mountain. You'll probably hit your blades and then end up rolling down the side of the mountain. So it's very, very critical um, to learn this skill and make sure that when you do commit to that final part of the approach, that you're going to commit all the way to the landing. So that's the plan for today. Okay, yeah, we're at 1,000. That's cool. So why don't we end up, uh, or not end up, why don't we start our hazel check here? Okay, height 1,060. Area is good. Cabin is secure. Uh-huh. Engine, rotors in the green, and looking for traffic. Great. Traffic into the vicinity of Agassi, All right. G2 Golf, I'm calling a bump. Come out around Zero. whenever you think. About three miles west of Agassi, heading eastbound, I want down. Hi, going to Hope. Uh, not quite, we will do a uh, sooner loop here, while you're doing some instruments. Ah, uh, fantastic. You're almost at the helipad kingdom. Yeah, they need to figure those landings first before we go there. Yep. Okay, so you're going to decide when you're going to make it, when you think you're going to make it. Okay. And then we'll enter, and we're going to see if we're actually going to make it. Okay. And if we're not, then we're going to range for So you decide when you want to enter it. Alright. Three, two, one, go. Okay, nice. All the way down in the collective. RPM's got a little low there. So what do you think? Are we going to make it? Uh, I think so. Okay. Or we're maybe going a little the, short. The two logs right there. Going to be the short, you think? No, I think we're good. Okay. We want 50 knots. Yeah, watching your rotor. How are we looking now? Uh, overshooting. Okay. Right away, let's do some range variating. We don't want to lose all our speed, so we're going to slow down only a little bit and a bit of S turning. There you go. Okay. Now, nose down a little bit. There we go. We got enough time to get a little bit of speed back. There you are. Okay, you have control. I have control. Nice flare now. Keep the nose straight. Throttles back on. And coming out of that flare. All right. So we were a little slow on getting that RPM back. You could hear it coming back, but it just was a little bit late. On the throttle? On the throttle. Okay. Yeah. So we just want to roll on a little bit sooner. Okay. Okay. So that was interesting. So um, you have control. So that's the process that we're going through today is learning taking the assessment because as soon as we entered and i looked at the spot i was like oh we're gonna be too long and so but okay. for you to assess that i mean we've only done a handful of these things so uh it's going to take a little while so i didn't want to say anything because i want you to assess it and assess it again and assess. so it's nice in the end you did make the right assessment and uh so you said whoa we got to do something so right away as soon as you recognize it we still had altitude there let's do some adjustments make some turns whatever and even slowing down a little bit and then diving back in is very helpful because it really, the process of slowing down and then diving loses a lot of altitude. Right. Um, so that's good. So I think we did pretty good. Let's pedal turn around. 
Let's see how we did in relation to those logs. I think we missed it still a little bit. But again, as we talked about, you know, if we hadn't done anything, maybe we would have run off the edge of the beach there. So there's our logs over there. Yeah, so we're like, oh, what is that, 100, 150 feet or something like that? Yeah. Not too bad. Okay, cool. Uh, this is a good opportunity to check traffic while we're at it. Yep, uh, looks all clear. Awesome, then let's go again. All right, lights are off, rotors in the green, T's and P's in the green, switches up, carpet auto. I'm gonna go a little lower and try to do a minimum power takeoff to the left of that log over there. Sounds great, yep. Minimum power takeoff, close to the ground, staying in ground effect, creeping along. As soon as you feel the shutter for translation, start building speed, building speed, that's good, keep building speed. There you go. And as soon as you get to about 40, 45 knots, that nose can slowly start coming up. There she comes, beautiful. And that's good, we can go exercise over a normal power setting. There we go. Hazel check is done. Yep. We're so heading back at our spot. Let's keep normal cruise speed. It's always important to enter at a consistent speed so you can get a, a decent reference. And then whenever, again, whenever you think you're ready. Now, All like right. we talked about. Three, yep. two, one. So like we talked about um, a few days ago, you're always aiming visually for about 50 feet short of your spot. So you're not actually physically aiming for your spot. Oh, 50 feet short of it. Okay. So how does it look now? Uh, looking pretty good. Okay. How's it looking now? A little, little long, Just I guess. Just a tiny bit. So a little bit S turning. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Keep the speed up again. So we're at 40. Let's get the speed back up. Ooh, that's looking nice. There you go. RPMs are nice. Okay, nice flare now. Throttle coming back on. Keep it straight. Keep it straight. Come out of the flare. Come out of the flare. Don't hang the flare too long. <laughs> yeah, I was focusing too much on the throttle that time. Yeah, exactly. Okay, so you got control. control. So important to go into the flare. As you feel it build, that's great. If you feel that tail starting to get closer to the ground, immediately we got to start pushing out. So okay. before you feel like, oh, okay, it's dangerously close, we got to get pushed out. So that one we were hanging a bit too long. If it was a, like an R44 or an R66, the tail would have been fairly dangerously close. This thing's pretty short, so we got room still, but okay. trying to create a little bit of a buffer there. All right, but um, range variation wise, better, right? So yep. let's uh, have a little look around. It'll turn, I'll clear my way. I'd say this time we're within, yeah, 75 feet or something like that. I mean, we kind of want to be right here, maybe within 50 feet or something of where we really want to be. So that's much better. Okay, traffic is awesome. clear. All right. Cabin is secure, engine rotor in the green. And traffic, I don't see any traffic. Awesome. We are going a little bit faster and now we're a little higher. Okay. So I'm going to enter in three, two, one. All the way down in the collective. Be a little quicker getting oh. that collective down. You see how, no, nope, pull back. RPMs, if they're low, you pull back to get your RPMs back. Okay. There you go. All right, how are we looking? How's our distance? Um, looking good. Not bad, yeah. They're coming a little bit left there to get on track. Okay, that's nice. RPMs are just a tad on the low side, so start lowering a little bit of collective. That's good. That's perfect right there. Uh, Speeds a little fast. Yeah. One, two. Oh, wait, wait, wait. Okay, flare now. There you go. Throttle on. Nose out, or nose straight. And push it gently out. So what you can do, get into a nice hover. <laughs> so you feel on that one we just kind of kept going, right? Yeah. You want to, at the same time that you're pushing out, you want to be pulling that collective. Okay. So on that one, you went into the flare nice, and I feel like you might have pushed out just a hair early, but of course that's because of what I said on the last one. You don't right. want to hang the tail too long, right. which is fine. Uh, but you pushed out and then pulled power. And yep. that's going to accelerate you, right? Right. So at the same time that you're pushing forward on the cyclic, you should be pulling collective, and that flares the helicopter. You put some pitch on the blades while it's still a little bit nose up, and it flares it to a stop. And as you're coming to a stop, you're pushing it level into a nice hover. Okay. Now, because we don't have any wind today, there's like three knots of wind out there, we're always going to uh, be traveling a little bit over the ground, but we don't have to travel as much as we did on that one. So, good.
Checking traffic on my side. We're all clear. So we're looking at our approach angle. We're going to basically follow the dike in all the way. Okay. And this is a good height. This is a good distance. So we can kind of do circuits like this. I'm going to fly with you now. We're going to our descent checks. Lights are off. Rotors in the green. Temps and pressures green. All our switches on. Carb heat's on auto. We're going to come around. Now the interesting thing about the constant angle approach is all of this part here, back here, doesn't really matter. It does matter, of course, because you're setting yourself up for failure or success, depending on how you shoot your approach. Okay. But what I mean by it doesn't really matter is it's this part back here, we can be too high and we can drop the power like crazy and get onto the right profile. We can be too low and bring it back up. We have all kinds of options because we're in translation. We have power reserve because of that. Okay. And so we're okay to do lots of adjustments back here the part that is really critical and really matters the most is sort of the last two to 300 feet of the approach. That's where we don't want to be high or low. That's where we don't want to be too fast or slow, okay? Okay. And so I'm aiming right in here for the corner of the dike, and I've got a nice speed here. And it's a constant angle in the sense that I'm constantly shooting an approach to the spot. I'm always descending, and I'm always slowing down. But I'm not slowing down to the point of a hover until I get to my spot. So I'm coming in, I'm coming in. Doesn't have to come in terribly fast, but I just need to keep it moving, keep it moving. This is the critical part right here. I'm always moving, always, 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 always right to my spot. And I do not stop till those skids are over top of my spot. Once I am, then I can take my time and I can go ahead, I can slowly land it, okay? A little bit of a seating check, make sure we're solid. And then there we are, okay? so. This is the area that we want to land. If we land too far that way, we're on a nice slope down. If we land too, too far that way, you can see there's a ridge line right there. And so we're going to end up rocking back and forth. Okay? Okay. Now let me fly with you for a sec. Okay. Uh, lights, rotors, temps, pressures, everything's green. Just want to give you one example of what I'm not, like what I don't want to see. Yeah. I'm just going to back up a little bit here. Two practice, R44, golf mic, and it's Charlie, two miles south, southeast to the greenhouse, 700 feet. Climbing to one. And I'll show you why. To the greenhouse, and the white spot, that was perfect. I'll just kind of simulate a little bit of why we don't want to fall short. So what we're going to do is we're going to end up coming into a hover just shy of our spot. Okay. And then I'm going to droop the rotor a little bit. I'm just going to roll a little bit of throttle down to give us a little bit of a feeling of overpitching. Okay. And it's going to give you a really eerie sense of why we don't want to do this. So I missed shot my approach. I'm a little bit low and slow. And so I ended up right here. And then I'm going to roll a little bit of throttle you feel the helicopter sinking, yeah. and now it's like, ah, oh, there's 100% power, oh no. And I was able to actually get it in here, luckily because we have lots of power reserve, right? And then I was able to hop back up. But in real life, what's gonna happen is because we don't have any power reserve, we're just really tight on the power, a little sitting check, there we go. We're just gonna continue sinking there, and we're gonna try and get the RPMs back, it's not gonna come back, and we're gonna end up just sinking and falling off the edge. Now here, we'd fall 10 feet. In real life, if it was a mountain or something, we could fall 1,000 feet or something. It's not gonna be good, right? Uh, so it can become super critical, super fast, just by screwing up the littlest tiny thing on the approach. And if you're not focused on that, and, and that's why I'm always pushing, pushing, pushing to make those approaches really all the way to your spot, not falling short. Um, it's because of reasons like that. And I've, I've been in situations like that where I've come in and then I've been on short final and I've realized, whoa, I don't have enough power. Maybe I mismanaged my power. Maybe there's a little bit different winds than I expected. And I realized, whoa, I don't have enough power for this. But because luckily I was taught well and I shot that approach appropriately, I was able to still make it to my spot, okay? Let me show you one more example, actually. Sorry, okay. lights, rotors, T's and P's. These are important so that you can kind of visually see what we can do and how we can fix things if they become a problem. So this time, what I'm gonna do, this is gonna be a little bit scary, but not nearly as scary as before, okay? This is actually gonna blow your mind on this one. <laughs> I'm probably gonna get some videos on, the, or some comments on the video going, that's so unsafe, I can't believe you do that. <laughs> uh, but what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna shoot, and this is really critical, I'm gonna shoot the perfect approach, okay? Coming in, everything's nice, speed is good, height is good, and right now I'm gonna start over pitching the aircraft, meaning, I'm rolling throttle off, I'm gonna keep rolling off, keep rolling off, the horn's on, keep rolling off, keep rolling off, and I'm gonna set it down. Now look at this, I was at 430 RPM when we landed, okay? 
Now, because I was talking you through it, and because there was a horn and stuff, it, you knew that there was an issue, right? If there was no horn and I didn't say a word, you wouldn't have had a clue, other than the fact that you're a pilot and you're watching RPMs, right? You wouldn't have had a clue that there was anything wrong with that approach, right? If you were an unknowing passenger, you would have thought, oh, that's a nice approach, right? But we were literally in a very big hurry stalling that aircraft and going to soon be falling out of the sky. I had no way to stop that approach on that last 10 feet. I couldn't stop it because the RPMs were drooping and I was sinking. But because my approach was perfect and the angle was perfect, I was able to continue on that. I didn't need more power because I wasn't flat to my spot. I didn't need to climb up to get to my spot. I was always on this approach path, right? And so it's so critical because you can over pitch an aircraft and you can still land softly and comfortably and not wreck anything like we did on this one. And then you can reassess, right? Now, it, l l let me just preface this. If you do that, you screwed up somewhere, <laughs> right? right? You screwed up on your power check or maybe you didn't do a power check and that's a big screw up. So there's a screw up, there's a, me a mistake being made, right? But the, the part that's in critical at that point, yeah, you will make a mistake here and there uh, throughout your career, but if that approach was perfect, it's going to save your life when that mistake was made. That's the critical part because I've had situations in my last, whatever, 15 years where I have made the mistake that I mismanaged my power. I thought I had enough. I get in there and I didn't. And I realize, oh man, I'm over pitching here. I was able to land, get it on the ground safely, and then reassess. There's many things you can do, right? You can get rid of cargo. You can get rid of passengers. You can re, re shift the load. You can do all kinds of stuff, right? Maybe you can get back out with a minimum power departure once you're in ground effect. There's, there's different options. But um, that doesn't really matter so much because now you're safely on the ground and you can figure it out. If you have to kick out a passenger and fly somebody else to the bottom of the mountain, come back and get them, that's fine. It's easy, right? Um, because your helicopter is still flying and it's safe, okay? So those are the reasons why this uh, this exercise is super critical. So now we're gonna go ahead and practice it. Um, same procedure, we're gonna pick up in the hover, check for traffic, all that good stuff, depart out over the trees, so a little bit of a steeper departure, okay. and, uh, and then come back in for it. All right, so how are we looking here? All right, so a little bit low right now. All right, I'd say you're decent. I mean, I don't see a problem with the approach. Okay. Uh, but we want to start slowing it down gradually now. I feel like if we keep this up, we're going to be a bit too fast coming in. We don't want to end up with a flare at the end. We want to just, it should be constant angle, so we should be just constantly slowing down, slowing down, slowing down, without having to flare it to a stop. So we're doing good. I'd say we're coming in a little tiny bit fast. So slower down a little bit. Slow her down a little bit more. Good, aiming for the corner. Coming in still a little fast. Feel how you're flaring it to a stop now? Yeah. And lots of right pedal. Okay, so we did make it to the spot. That was important, right? Yeah. But we came in a bit too fast. We had to flare it into a hover at the end there. And because of all the torque that you had to pull, we got a bit too much of a, a left yaw there. Okay, let's go ahead and land it. Kind of just even a challenge in its own because we're landing in a confined space, basically. There you go. A little bit forward tipping there, but that's fine. We're on solid ground. Let's do a little seating check. That's great. Yeah, I think we're already on that slope just a little bit. We could come over a couple feet left next time. Um, all right. So yeah, you can feel how you're coming in great and then all of a sudden it's like, ooh, we're a little fast, a little fast, so start slowing it down early. It's not that we have to come in super fast. We can come in slow. We just can't have lose translation, translation and then um, continue to slow down and stop before we get to the spot. The idea is to continue the motion to your spot, but constantly be slowing down. Okay. Okay, let's try again. All right, how's she looking now? Feeling pretty good. Okay, I like it. Gonna see that we're not gonna get into the same trap as last time coming in too fast. That's good. You're constantly asking yourself the question, am I too high or too low, too fast or too slow? And it's just again and again and again, re reassessing, 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 and make whatever adjustments you need to. So we're a little fast still. A little bit slower, a little bit slower. There you go, that's good. Now keep her moving, forward cyclic, forward cyclic. There you go, keep her, there you go, all the way to the spot. Beautiful. Keep her going. Keep her going all the way there, all the way. Beautiful. Right to your spot. That was a good one. I like that. And yeah, a little bit over here is perfect right there. Ooh, that was a that was very nice actually. That was your second approach on that. 
And you already got it figured out. If you could feel, I'll let you land it here. <laughs> let you focus, a little seat check. That's good. So you could feel right in that last five feet, it really wanted to screech to a halt. And that's where you really got to force it through because especially in this helicopter, small rotor disc, right? It loses that translation quickly and it tries to hit the brakes fast. So you really got to push it through, make sure you get all the way to the spot um, every time. That's, that's the important part. Cool, let's try it again. It's always nice to say out loud, tail clear. I saw you looking, but just say it out loud for the habit of it. Okay. In real life, like when you're operationally flying, you don't have to say it. But when you have an examiner beside you, like they, they want to hear it. So. All right, I'll say it. I just didn't want to annoy you. No, that's fine. Definitely not annoying me. Uh oh. What's going on? You don't have enough power. <laughs> okay, let's go into into the field here. Let's not spin it. Are you rolling throttle off on me? No, I'm not touching the throttle. <laughs> so you want to make sure that if that kind of thing happens, you don't let the trim get you out. So we, what I've done here is I've held my hand over the collective uh. and I've restricted your how much you can pull up. So essentially, I've restricted you to 100%, essentially. Uh, right? okay. So what I'm simulating is that you don't have enough power to climb out over those trees there. Okay. <laughs> okay? At first you were like, oh no, something serious is wrong, this is bad. Uh, this is good, that's good. We want to think about that. So um, we realize now that we don't quite have the power that it's going to take to climb over these trees. Now, assuming that this is the scenario all around us and this little area that we have here is the only thing we have, there's a, a trick we could use because it's a big enough area to actually get out of here without having to climb up over those trees. Okay. okay? So what I want you to do is start a gentle departure towards those trees and then start a gentle right turn as you start getting close to them. We're going to do an orbit. We're going to get translational lift, get an orbit going, and orbit right out of this hole. So fa face a little more this way. That's good. And keep it above the ground. Yeah, you got enough power for this. It's fine. Keep accelerating. We're trying to get translational lift. Keep accelerating, keep accelerating. Good, and it'll end up in a fairly tight turn, but keep it fairly close to the trees around the perimeter. We're going to have enough room. There you go, so you got translation now. And keep the orbit going, keep the orbit going. That's good, keep this tight turn. You can bring that nose up a little bit. We got 40 knots now. There you go, don't lose all your speed. There you go, keep it going, keep it going, keep it going. Excellent. And so with 80% and then eventually less, we were able to get out of there. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. That doesn't always work. Obviously, sometimes you're in a tight area and you can't do an orbit like that. But um, sometimes you do have that possibility. So it's kind of like a max weight operation. <laughs> <laughs> That's fun. Uh, so I was looking at it and I'm like, <laughs> my rotor's all the way at the top of the green and I'm only at 80%. What's going on? I can't understand. And I'm looking at the split in the needles. I'm like trying to figure out if you're rolling throttle off of me. I'm like, this does not make any sense. <laughs> Why, why can't I pull up any more collective? Oh no. <laughs> uh, that's cool. <laughs> <laughs> but I was like, I was looking yeah, right there. I was like, it's in the green. What's going on? Okay, left tail is clear. Let's rotate the way. And check for traffic. All right. All clear. Are we going for 80%? Is 100%? No, no, whatever, no, whatever you need to get out of here is totally fine with me. Okay. Normal departure. Oh, this light just came on. So aborting your landing, it's nice for you to sort of declare what's going on. Oh, I have an emergency. I'm going to go land as soon as possible. Okay. And then down we go. So a couple things there. Let's talk them over. Um, I'm flying with you now. Okay. Um, so when you depart or when you abort a departure, you try and keep the nose into wind or straight as long as possible, if, if you can. Okay. Okay. And so let's see if we can re-simulate where that happened. And then the second thing was, you started to turn to the left, which is actually the torque turn, right? Okay. And so you could get into what's called LTE, right? Yeah. So 
right about here. Okay, so we abort. Power goes down. Nose goes forward. I, I have a corner here that I'm going for. I have enough room. So I'm aborting the departure. I've got an emergency. And I'm going to find the quickest, safest place to land. Uh, looks like about here, a little bit tall grass. Now that I'm in the hover, I could take an extra second, move around if I need to. You know, if it's a real emergency, I'm probably not going to care about the tall grass. And I'll just put it down. I think we're going to be safe here. And then on the ground she goes, okay? okay? But in that one, I turn to the right, which is the power pedal turn. And so I'm not going to have the possibility of getting into LTE, right? Okay. But the issue with the one that you did was you were coming down. So the, the torque level was low. And then you started a left-hand turn. We're just going to get set up to the similar area there. Yep. And you started a left-hand turn, and then you had to raise collective. So you're coming in like this, right? We're in the direction of torque, and then you had to raise collective. What could have happened when you pull power is it goes into a spin like right. this, right? We don't want to end up in a situation like that. So if Especially you if we have a tail box. Yeah, well, whatever box, emergency, but a, a, yeah, a, a main rotor gearbox or tail rotor gearbox, whatever, right? Um, so if you can make that turn to the right in this helicopter or left in a North American helicopter, that's going to be a little bit better for you. Always in the power pedal direction. Okay. But also on, the, on mine, you noticed I actually kept the nose straight for quite a while, right? Yep. I got the power down, I started that descent, and then once I was controlled and everything was kind of good, then I started a slight right-hand turn, aim for the, the corner of the spot, and then we were safely able to get it down. Okay. okay. Um, you have control? I have control. Okay. Let's go ahead and depart straight from here. Traffic's still all clear. I'm going to give you another scenario. I'll give you a heads up on it. Uh, we're going to have the same thing happen. But we're going to have it happen once we've already passed translational lift and passed the tops of the trees. Okay? okay. So we can go ahead and start accelerating a little bit. We're just crossing the tops of the trees now. And, uh-oh, light on now. So let me fly with you. We're going to actually accelerate a little bit. Okay. We're going to gain some speed because we don't want to turn downwind with no speed. Okay. Now I'm at 40 knots, okay? okay? So I've got enough speed to turn downwind, and I'm abbreviating my circuit. I'm looking around. There was nowhere in front of me to land past those trees. It's just water, right? I'm looking at my spot here. Okay, that's my safest, quickest spot I can get to. And I'm abbreviating the approach as much as I can without endangering the aircraft or anything, you know, me or whatever, right? So as quickly and safely as I can, getting back into wind. Now, if there was no wind, I would just land in the field over there, right? But today we're assuming there's some wind. Right. And so I'm quickly and safely getting the helicopter back down. At the moment, it's just a light. It's a serious light, very serious, and I want to get on the ground as quickly as possible, but I don't want to create another emergency. I don't want to go crash the helicopter just because I have a light on, right? right. That, it might take me 10 minutes to have that light turn into a serious emergency. It might take me two minutes. I don't know. But... I don't want to crash the helicopter in the meantime. So whatever the safest, best place for me to land. Now, the dike may not be the best and safest place, but in this scenario, I'm assuming maybe this is our only landing spot. Maybe it was a field around here. That's fine, right? right? right. Uh, the, the scenario is you're up and over trees, you're coming out of a confined space, and all of a sudden, oh, you have an emergency. If you don't have something immediately in front of you, then that's fine, but go ahead and accelerate first. Think, think first fly the aircraft and get accelerate because if you're at 20 knots all of a sudden you turn downwind again you could get yourself into that LTE situation right, right. Um, so accelerate get downwind as quickly and safely as possible set up that approach get it back in land it on the ground as quickly as you can hold the board and take off all right all right cool let's go just do another uh, regular circuit let's assume that we start hearing some bit of a, a weird sound right now or just a bit of a Interesting sound, you're like, that's strange. Okay. There's a little bit of vibration that you're feeling. All of a sudden, bing, this light comes on, right? Okay. Whoa, this became a really serious emergency now. Way more serious than the one we just saw before with the, with just the light. Okay. So right away, I, as soon as I get over these trees, I'm coming down, the grinding's getting worse, the sound's getting worse, right? And yeah. I'm just gonna get this thing near the ground as quickly as I possibly can, okay? Yeah. So I'm gonna, just gonna bring it in like this, I'm gonna start slowing it down here, and I get it close to the water, and I get it what's called within, not what's called, I, I've kind of coined the term, within jumping distance. Okay. Meaning, this is a distance where if the thing seizes up on me, I'm probably gonna live, right? right. And I'm close to the shore, so I've got good reference over the water, and what I'm gonna do, I'm not gonna ditch it right now, because I, obviously there's, there's no good reason to ditch it at the moment, but if, if I start feeling that vibration getting worse, and everything's getting worse, right? I'm gonna have to, at some 
point make a decision, do I ditch it? Is it safer to ditch it? Or do I want to continue for shore, right? Now, if I was a long ways away from shore and I had just brought it down over, you know, big, big, big lake or the ocean or something like that, and it was really starting to shake and vibrate and make sounds and stuff like that, then it would probably be a better idea, idea to just ditch it there before the thing seizes up on me, right? But in a scenario like this, you have to make that call. So depending on how bad it feels and if it's going to come apart on you in a hurry, you might want to just stay like this. Now, notice the speed and the height that I'm at, right? Yep. If the transmission seizes, we're going to plop into the water. I would probably pop my doors open right now, okay? So doors would get open, passengers' doors are open. I'm briefing my passengers. I'm going to tell them, okay, guys, we have a serious emergency here. We're probably going to ditch in the water. I want you to get your, uh, your door open. I want you to get your hand ready with your seatbelt. Don't undo your seatbelt yet, but get your hand ready with your seatbelt. Um, remember the procedure for getting your seatbelt off, right? Remember that the door is right beside you to your left there. So if we go into the water, if we go into the water, as soon as we touch the water and the blade stops spinning, seatbelt off and hop out of the, the helicopter right away, okay? So you're briefing the passengers on what to do. You can tell them to brace a bit, you know, get head back and get kind of ready for it. And what you're doing in the meantime is you're just trying to get the helicopter as quickly but safely as you can to somewhere that's land, right? Yep. And the reason I'm going so slow is because if I'm going really fast and the thing seizes, I don't want to endo into the water and end up getting disorientated upside down, all that kind of stuff, right? Right. And so I'm going to find a spot here. I don't really like the looks of that beach. I'm going to find a spot here um, that looks like a safe enough spot. There's nobody around here. Obviously, if it was a real one, I wouldn't care if there was people around. <laughs> and uh, and I'm going to get it onto the ground and get the thing shut down as quick as I can. Right. Okay? Now, if I was lucky enough to make it here, fantastic, right? Um, if I had, again, it's a bit of a debate, right? If I had passengers on board, there's a debate. Do I get my passengers out right now and, and not risk ditching with them? That's actually a potential option. You could just stop in the hover, get the guy to hop out, swim to shore, while you're still going to continue on, right? So that's a little bit of a choice that you have to make as a pilot. If I was as close as we were here, I might have attempted to, to make it all the way. But depends on the passenger, depends on how comfortable they are with helicopters, how much they've been in and out of them before, okay? Right. So you can take control. All right, I have control. Go ahead and depart. This time we're not going to pedal turn because we have uh, rocks and stuff around us. Okay. So I can... I can see that there's no traffic behind me. We'll just lift off back and up. fly away this way. Uh, we'll just out I, I like that. Okay. Uh, lights are off, road is in the green, T's and P's in the green, switches are off, car P auto. Good. While you're taking off, I'm going to keep talking. So um, if it was just an unknowing passenger, this is like a scenic flight, and you've never, they've never been in a helicopter before, they're very unaware of anything to do with you know, getting in and out of the helicopter. It's just all they've done is one briefing with you. You've showed them once. That's it, right? So uh, let's follow along the shoreline. Don't want to lose reference there. Yeah. So the likelihood of me um, ditching them and then continuing on with the helicopter is very high. Right. I'd probably, and especially depending on how many people there were in the helicopter, right? Um, so I might say, okay, guys, I'm just going to hover here for a second. Seatbelt's off. Hop out of the helicopter. It's like a, a, a two-foot drop and just swim off to the shore, right? Now it gets that liability off your shoulders. You don't need to be thinking about anybody else. Now it's just you and the aircraft, right? right. And then it's up to you, right? So let's go this way. Um, if you want to ditch the aircraft and get out safely, that's totally up to you, right? It, if you think that that's the safest option for you, then do it. Uh, but if you feel like, you know what? I think this helicopter, we're going to go around CMS Mountain. We're headed back. Okay. Um, if you feel like, no, you know what? This helicopter is going to hang together. Um, I think we can get this thing, the you know, the another 100 feet to shore or whatever, then go for it. Uh, hover the thing to shore and get it down on the ground. If it does end up breaking up on you, uh, you know, it's going to be a quick, violent whip around. That's why we got our, our helmets on. <laughs> and uh, and then you're going to drop into the water, get out, away you go, right? So it's, it's not a great scenario. We don't like talking about it. But it's those things, and we've talked about this before. If you can think through scenarios, you can pre-think what you would do in those situations. Um, and you can actually physically see it, like, okay, that's the situation, that's what's happening right now, then it, it helps you make more instinctive decisions if that were to ever happen to you. It's not likely that those kind of uh, situations happen, like those lights come on and stuff, but it is possible. Right. Um, you know, they have happened on other helicopters in the past, and, you know, they do everything they can in manufacturing to avoid that from ever happening, good maintenance and all the rest of it, but unfortunately stuff like that does still happen, so...
Good to think it through. All right, so that was a little more of a serious flight. There was uh, there's some really fun things and then um, some fairly serious things uh, because there are some serious topics that we need to be going through. So really important. Um, pretty eye-opening, eh? Yeah, very <laughs> eye-opening. I'm looking forward to getting uh, lots of more of those approaches in. You did really good on the dike approaches today. Thanks. You're going to be doing lots more of those. Hope yeah, you guys, I really liked them. Yeah, they were cool, right? Yeah. Hope, hope you guys like this video. Um, I don't know, head over to that like button, hover over there. Maybe you'd give it a little tap with your blade or something. <laughs> 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 We're going to talk to you guys again tomorrow. See ya. See ya.